And here we are for our pin cast for section 2.4. These are, uh, this is going to be our discussion of the sets of equations for motions of the plane. And again, we use R2 as our description of the plane. Now, uh, as, we, as we mentioned before, motions are simply very special mappings. Um, they are mappings that are uh, transformations, which means that they are one-to-one -one and onto, and they also preserve dist distances. So if you have two points that are exactly one unit apart, then you map them through a motion, their images are also going to be one unit apart. But what we're going to focus on right now is simply the fact that they are matchings or mappings. So that means we have a point x comma y, and we are going to map it to some point x prime y prime. Or if you'd like uh, to emphasize this notion that the mapping is a function, uh, you have x comma y being put into this function, and what comes out is the point x prime comma y prime. So <clears throat> if we want to actually do something very uh, technical with a, a mapping like this, it helps to have a, an, an analytic description. And uh, the systems, the sets of equations for for the mapping uh, is actually what, what helps us do that, what gives it to it, gives it to us. So x prime, this x coordinate from the image, this is some function of x and y. And similarly, y prime, which is the second coordinate, is some possibly other function of x and y. Uh, <clears throat> you may recall in our, our one of our previous discussions, we had two functions. We had an f and a g, and I had um, I had three points marked a, b, and c. And then I had the images of those points under some mysterious uh, mysterious mappings. And uh, I'm not entirely certain, but I'm pretty sure that the portion of that um, that was available to you, you couldn't tell what the equations were, uh, which was intentional because we didn't, we weren't ready to talk about equations of, of mappings yet. But the first one, uh, I'm going to reveal my big secret. The first one simply took the, for the x-coordinate of the image, uh, it took the average of the x and y-coordinate of the input. And for the y-coordinate of the image, it looked at the difference between one-half x and one-half y. Uh, and this turned out to be a transformation but not a motion, okay, uh, and function g was, uh, in my opinion, the, the more interesting of the two. Uh, it actually had a function, uh, x prime was one-tenth of x squared, so the x-coordinate of the image point was one-tenth the square of the x-coordinate of the original point, and the y-coordinate of the image was just one more than the y-coordinate of the input. Uh, and this was neither a transformation nor a motion. Um, and of course, it can't be a motion if it's not a transformation. A motion is a transformation that also preserves distance. Uh, and they, the key to showing that it's not a transformation is, for one thing, um, this is not one-to-one -one because, um, for instance, let's see, 0 0.4 comma 1 is the image of, let's see, um, 2 comma 0 and minus 2 comma 0. So there were two points 
two comma zero and minus two comma zero that both map to the same point zero point four comma one. And so uh, that function is not one to one, therefore it can't be onto, or therefore it can't be a transformation. It's actually not onto either, because you'll notice uh, that one tenth x squared can never be negative, and so uh, this mapping is going to miss the entire left side of the plane. So uh, that that mapping uh, was was very far from being a motion for many different reasons. Okay, so back to uh, back to our sets of equations of motions of the plane. We we essentially have two really important theorems. Uh, our, the first one is theorem 2.2, which tells us uh, if we have something that we know to be a plane motion, it tells us what the equations uh, for that mapping must look like. And so the equations must have one of two forms. Our first form, which I'm going to call a type 1, uh, it says that our new x-coordinate is some constant a times x plus some constant b times y plus some constant c. And our y-prime, our new y-coordinate, is going to be minus b, which is that same b up here, times x plus a times y plus some constant d. And the only, the only restriction we have on these are that the numbers a, b, c, and d have to be real numbers, obviously, and a squared plus b squared equals 1. Okay, so the type 1 has uh, the, the signs on, the, on these two terms matching, and the signs on the terms on this diagonal are the opposite. Okay, the type 2 is very similar and in fact it took me uh, a while um, when I was first reading this material to uh, to catch on to the fact that, that the difference is where this where the uh, signs match so in the type 2 we have the same sign on these two terms and we have the opposite sign on these two terms. Now our, uh, our discussion questions are actually going to be discussing each of these types individually and what types, what types of plane motions they describe. Okay, so theorem 2.2 says if we know we have a plane motion then it has to have one of two types of sets of equations. Theorem 2.3 actually uh, tells us very something very different and something rather surprising, and that's uh, if you pick any four numbers, A, B, C, and D, that satisfy this condition, then if you use either one of these uh, sets of equations, you will end up with a plane motion. Okay? So... Um, theorem 2.2 says that if you have a plane motion, then the equations must look like this. Must be type 1 or type 2. And theorem 2.3 says if you have equations of that form, type 1 or type 2, as long as these numbers A, B, C, and D are chosen very carefully so that A squared plus B squared equals 1, then what you, what you have there is exactly a plane motion. Uh, the the strange thing, or the fun thing to figure out, is if you have if you start with just these four numbers A, B, C, and D, uh, what what plane motion do you get? Theorem two point three says it is a plane motion. Uh, it doesn't tell you how to figure out which one. And uh, as it turns out the type of equation, the type of set of equations that you end up with um, is the important indicator. Namely, where does this mismatch of signs end up? Does it end up uh, on, well, is it, is it on the B's or is it on the A's? And uh, that's what we're going to have a whole lot of fun uh, finding out in our discussion sections.